Last week, I got my work authorization in the United States. Nice. And I got my driver license. Yeah. And the license says Sanchez as last name, Juan as first name, Venezuela as middle name. And I look at the ID and I'm like, holy For split shit, I school. I have another identity. Hey, this is Matt Cox, and uh, I'm with Juan. And so, yeah, uh, we're going to do a podcast about, uh, we were talking something sparked something. We decided to talk about dysfunctional families. Well, I think of, we were talking about Anna, and we were talking oh, about uh, your sister, and and then we realized that there is, seems to be a pattern with criminals coming from uh, some kind of dysfunctional family. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, all, all families are dysfunctional, pretty much. I mean, there's very, I, I don't know many functional families where there is like two two people got married they had two kids there are no real problems they yeah but i don't think all these functional all products of these functional families uh end up committing crimes no no well so there has to be something down maybe maybe it's down the line of dna or whatever i think i think I was talking to a guy in federal prison who was a uh, scientist. Um, I forget what kind of a scientist. He basically, they, they, he did stuff with um, genetics and things like that. Okay. And he was in there for me. He was a child molester. Um, and so we were talking about, like, like uh, what, what's the issue, bro? And he was ta- telling me about, listen, a lot of you know child molesters are products of being molested themselves. It's like 80% of all child molesters, people that commit you know sex crimes, are as a result of them being the victim of a sex crime at some point in their life. So he was talking about that, but we were also talk, ended up talking about how he said, I said, yeah, but it's, it's what? It's nature versus nurture, right? Like it's a little bit of both. He goes, it's actually, he said, it's like, it's actually the, a huge percentage is, is nature. He said, there's your DNA. It's your DNA. He goes, a lot of it's your DNA. He said, you can have identical situations and one person's going to succeed and a dozen other people will fail he was the only difference really is is nature and he was saying that like it's it's like 70 percent. my dad was a con artist are you serious? my dad was a con, i mean I, I never met him i met him once but he was a he was a con man nice and he went to prison for conning people several times wow and in uh, venezuela or in, in spain? venezuela oh, actually he fled to spain because he was wanted in venezuela Bro, you so gotta start mom, mentioning that my, in your when you I tell know, your story. My my birth was so my mom chased him around Europe, and because uh, she loved him, or because, because she loved him. Oh, that's what we do. We're lovable people. I I inherited that also. The brown people. I <laughs> were brown and lovable. So my mom followed him around to Spain, and uh, so I'm born in Madrid. But then he goes to Italy and he marries somebody else who is my stepmom, which I love her. And uh, I'm, I have two sisters from that marriage. So my mom comes back. But as I'm growing up, I'm hearing all these stories. So then I meet my sisters and they're telling me like, oh, yeah, we live with our dad. And, and, and he was he will show up one day with a car. And then a week later, we didn't have a car anymore. And then he will say, well, look, at this is the new house. And then two months later, we have to move out. We have to move out. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then they were like, oh, my God, he was so unstable. And. They were telling me later on, we found out that he was like moving into people's houses that were in his house and he was signing these contracts for sale. And then he will scam them out of money and then they'll have to run and get somewhere else. And and then he will take a car as a down payment for some, a property that wasn't his. I guess. Yeah. So although I never met him. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of work. The DNA, according to your friend, is there. And my mom, when when I used to when I started teaching, that later led me to scamming. My mom will sit on some of my classes, and she will say like, "Oh my God, you sound just like your dad." I mean, like I see you standing there, and I see the way people are like nodding at you, is is perturbing. Yeah. Like, like your dad used to do that all the time. He would have these groups of people and just take their money, and I'd be like, "Huh? Yeah, I wonder if That's I can be like daddy." Crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, my I'm I'm almost exactly like my dad. Like anybody that knows me, they're like you're exact. Like my father never he was never broke the law or anything, but he was a salesman and he trained people to be salesmen. 
He was extremely gruff. He was. Um, you had an uncle in prison or a cousin in prison or something like that. Yeah, but no? there's no blood relation there. That was okay. my brother-in-law's cousin. Okay. And he, um, but my dad, he would, uh, he, he was, you know, smart guy, charismatic, but he was, what was it? My mom always would say, people always say, you know, he was just very matter of fact, very um, assertive, okay. you know, just blunt. Like, like they're like, like literally when you talk, we can, I can see your father. And the thing is my son, everybody, even though he's had like almost virtually no contact with me, everybody says the same thing. He is just like you like he says the same same mannerisms says the same things same uh arrogance same you know very opinionated like all the things that i was when i was his age I, he, it's identical but you grew up with some money i mean you weren't rich yeah but you grew upper up, middle class you grew up with upper an upper middle class yeah not that rich is, but upper middle definitely and upper. you went to private school and you went to college and you had the whole you yeah know, yeah I had privilege the whole, yes okay I got the pedigree so because uh, yeah, you had the pedigree. Because I grew up with no money. No. And, uh, in, in Venezuela, yeah. I mean, I thought I grew up in like a super nice neighborhood. So <laughs> until you actually went to a nice neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> so then, when I was married, and I told my ex-wife, I said, "Listen, I'm gonna show you where I grew up. And let's go to Venezuela." And she's like, "Yeah, I would love to see it." And I'm like, "Yeah, we grew up in these beautiful streets, and we used to play outside." And so I take her there, and it's been like 20 years since I've been there, and I'm going there. I'm like, "Oh my god, what the fuck is this place?" Then I look at my old house and I'm like, oh my God, I grew up in there. It's like a favela. And my wife is like, get me out of here because these guys don't look friendly at all. And I'm like, but they're like kids of my friends. Yeah. You know, so I grew up in a very shitty area of town. Then I came to the States and I went to school in a very shitty high school. But I have never, like I have never justified my crimes on that. Like I never said like, is it because I grew up poor that now I broke the law? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. You didn't, you didn't need money growing but, up. No, that's, that's what always kills me is that like people think like if your family has money, you have money. I don't have any money. Like my parents didn't have, didn't. It's not like they're like, oh, okay, well, you'll be getting your trust fund allowance for. <laughs> there's no trust fund. We, yeah. My dad, when I was 18, when I was, he was like, you're going to college, or you're going to work. I, I left. I left as soon as I turned 18. I immediately went, got an apartment with a friend of mine. We lived in the apartment. We worked after I did that for a couple of years, working construction and selling cars. Like I sold cars. I worked construction. And I was like, okay, this, this sucks. So then I said, I'm going to go to college. I went to college for four years because it was a way to get my father to pay what for What was your degree rent. in? Fine arts. Of course. Hi, my name is Juan Sanchez. And you know me from Matthew Cox podcast. I'm reaching out to you right now so you can go to his Patreon account and sponsor one of his three tiers he has. The first tier will give you a thank you text from him. The second tier will give you access to all of his videos, including the ones that I'm in, long length, full length. So, The third tier includes all of that plus one of these wonderful collectible paintings. Listen, I know there is hungry children in Africa. I know there is people starving in South America. But we need to help Matthew Cox, his cause. Please support him. Go to Patreon and help him help me help you. <laughs> so I did that. <laughs> then when I graduated, literally, my dad was, you know, he's paying me. Like I'm taking out, stu he's paying for school and I'm taking out grants and student loans and I'm working a part-time job. And so I'm, I'm doing okay. But like the last check he gave me, he was like, when do you graduate? And I go, May 5th. And he said, this is the last check you're getting. So I, and he, you know, he was like paying my rent. He said, he said, you'd better have a job. He said, before you graduate, because you ain't getting any more money from me. And I was like, okay. So I had a job that started May 1st. I started on the 1st, graduated on the 5th, you know, worked that job, horrible job. Um, but he never gave me any money. Like, like there was no, like, did I have a nice, when I graduated, when I turned 16? Yeah, I had a used, he bought a used car. It was a BMW. It was a used BMW. It was like three or $4,000, which in today's terms is probably like a six or $7,000 car. That car was, fell on, falling apart. And within a year, he bought me another car because the repairs were so bad on that car. He said, man, I'm just buying you a new car. So we got another car. When I graduated high school, I did. I got a, he got, bought me a, a, a Mustang. I got a brand new Mustang. Oh, yeah. That was nice. 
And um, yeah, but I mean, other than that, like helping get me a Were car, you ambitious? Were you greedy? Were you out of college saying, man, I got to make a million bucks. I got to become a millionaire. I had to have man, nice was, cars and nice or not. No, I wanted to have, a, I did want to make money, but I thought I was going to be a State Farm insurance uh, agent. Like I thought I could become a, an agent and sell insurance because my father had sold insurance. Then he became a manager. And he was a salesman. And everybody, oh, you're just like him. You're just like him. You're a born salesman. So I thought I could, I was going to do that. But I, I, I couldn't pass the aptitude tests. Like they, they the, the. You weren't smart enough to sell insurance. No, it is, it's not smart. It's an aptitude. Skill. Skilled. So I would take the tests and they would go, I don't understand. We're talking to you and you seem f very charismatic. But the tests are saying that. You you're, will never sell. You're not a good salesman. Which didn't make sense to me. Like, I mean, I took them over and over again. Yeah. All these places are saying no. Boy, these tests suck. And then I went, I got my degree. My, I ended up getting my 220 license so I could become an insurance adjuster. So I thought I'll be an adjuster until eventually, once you're in the company, you can kind of move up. Yeah. So I was going to be an adjuster. I was an insurance adjuster for two different companies. But one, I got laid off. It was so funny, too, because when I got laid off from this one insurance company, I was there maybe six months. And... They had lost a couple big accounts. And so there's like 40 people that work there that, that in my division. And so they start laying. Uh, I was the last person hired. The other people have been there years. And they kept laying people off like this. Oh, they let off, they laid off Jennifer and Tim. Oh, okay. And they look at me and I go, okay. And then they lay off three other people a week later. Yeah, they laid off them. He's been here four years. And I'm like, oh, oh okay. And When they called me in to lay me off, I genuinely looked at the H and R per HR person and thought, you're laying me off? Like, yeah, these other idiots, but me? You're making the biggest mistake I'm of your amazing. life. <laughs> these guys, sure. I get John. John was a retard. John, sorry, John was an idiot. But me? I'm amazing. Like, and yeah, the last, like I should have been the first person fired. So yeah, eventually I, I got laid off. I started working construction. But you never had a criminal mind. You never thought of like, man, maybe like when you were doing adjusting, you never thought like, maybe if I can. Like oh, no, no. I was constantly thinking that. Oh, okay. I was constantly thinking I could do this. And if someone, if I got somebody, all I got to do is get, if you I had an, a buddy who had an insurance policy and they sent in the, the, you know, a, a, a claim, like how could I fake the claim? And I was, I was always thinking that, but I was like, bro, what are you doing? Like, don't. But don't. I, I, it is my understanding that not everybody thinks that way. I've heard that. Everybody, I was always, I just wasn't story. doing it. Let me tell you, this, you guys, if you have, if you just tuned in, you have to listen to this story. So for well, your I've viewers, got one too. So your viewers one. that have been watching me since I've been coming to your channel, last week, I got my work authorization in the United States. Nice. And I got my driver license. Yeah, yeah. So I go to get my driver license and I gave this girl my immigration papers and she's never seen him before. So she doesn't know how to deal with this thing. So she's doing my driver license and it says on the, in the immigration paperwork, it says Sanchez, Juan, Venezuela, my country of birth yeah. or my citizenship, should I say. So she gives me her license, my license and goes, check it, make sure everything is okay. And the license says Sanchez as last name, Juan as first name, Venezuela as middle name. And I look at the ID and I'm like, holy For split. shit, that's cool. I have another identity. Yeah. I can create a synthetic identity with this name, put credit on it. And then I go, sorry, you made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and the lady's like, really? I'm like, don't yeah. question it, please. please. Just change it quickly please. before. I <laughs> please. <laughs> please correct it, please. She's like pulling the ID from my dead grip. Like, Ugh. And I'm like, my name is Juan Carlos Sanchez. Can you please correct my ID? So then I'm telling the story. But before I tell them the punchline, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe they make those mistakes. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That mistake is really good. Yeah, that could It's, be a good that's mistake. That's phenomenal. That's a, that's a state out given an original fake ID. Yeah. Nice. So it is my understanding that most people don't think like that. Hi, in these times where there is so much hatred in the world, We need to come together and help my friend, Matthew Cox. Right now, he's desperate for your help, and he has opened a Patreon account in which for $10, you can get him to send you a thank you for your $10. The second tier 
is $50 and you will have access to all of my videos and some of his videos the whole length. That's the length of the video, by the way. Tier number three, you will get one of these original paintings, collectibles, one out of ten. They may not be worth a lot, but when Matt dies, they will be worth a lot. And the way he's living, they will be worth a lot pretty soon. So please support his cause and visit his Patreon account. So that's what I wanted to know. If you think that's because of DNA or if it's because of just... Is that nature, like you just said, is that nature versus nurture? Because I didn't grow up with criminals. I mean, nobody, my oh, mom no, is I like as no, straight any as they come. And no. my brother is, listen, he's care of the, of the security guards at the mall. I mean, so I don't know if it's something that is just genetic or, or on the brain. <laughs> so, or... so when I was, uh, I was uh, 17, 16, I was 16. I had a buddy whose name was uh, Arthur Levinson. No, not Levinson. Was it? I don't know, Arthur. So let's say, or let's say Levinson. I forget his last name. Uh, Arthur uh, Levinson. Arthur had had his vehicle, was parked on the street, and had gotten robbed. Somebody broke in and stole uh, uh, like a, a radio. And so I remember that he, tr he went to his ought to try and claim, and he, he didn't have, he didn't have, um, uh, he had just basic PIP, right? So okay. he didn't, so he, he didn't have full cover. coverage. So they, they said, yeah, we're not going to cover it. You don't have full coverage. And he was like, dang. So then he went, um, and he said, uh, so then he, he went to his, he called up his insurance company and said, Hey, listen, um, no, no, I'm sorry. That, that was it. So he told me, yeah, they turned him down. So that was all I knew. So when I went to dinner that night, I said, yeah, dad, I said, listen, I said, you know, my friend Arthur, his car got broken into. He tried to cover it. They said this, he didn't have full coverage. So, you know, he didn't have, uh, um, you know, property, uh, yeah, they, they wouldn't cover it. And he goes, yeah, I know. He said, where was the car parked? I go at his house. He goes, I, I said, he was at his house. And he went, Hmm. He goes, was it parked in the driveway or was it parked on the street? And I went, it was parked on the street. Why? He goes, I said, why? He goes, because if it was parked in the driveway, he could cover it on his homeowner's insurance, his dad's homeowner's insurance policy. And I went, really? And he goes, yeah. So I go back to him and I said, yeah, my dad said that if it was parked on, in, on the driveway, you could cover it in your homeowner's insurance policy, your dad's homeowner's insurance policy. And I said, except for you have a probably have a deductible of like $500 or $1,000. And he goes, well, let me call my dad. And he called his dad and said, dad, this, listen, listen, listen. And his dad goes, yeah, but it wasn't parked in the driveway. It was parked on the street, and you're not covering, c claiming it. And he goes, okay. So he, he, so we looked at the police report, and the police report just said that it was parked that at the residence. Doesn't say where it was where parked. Where the residence? And so he had told his dad that. And his dad goes, yeah, but that's not what's happening. So he said, no. So he's like, yeah, I know. I said, you're that's you an know. idiot. I said, you know, we could make a claim. Like you could call and make a claim and your dad wouldn't know. And he went, I said, I mean, think about it. You and your dad have the same name. Oh my God. If they issue the check, it's, it's going to be, be it's, they'll mail it here. You just have to get the check before he does. And he was like, huh? <laughs> and he went, yeah, but, but like the homeowner, like, like I'm going to have to call and, and what I, uh, yeah, you know what? He goes, I don't know. I said, call. So he called up. He calls up and he makes a claim. Hey, my name's so-and-so. My car was parked in the driveway. Da, 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 da. I have the police report. He faxes it over. They come back and they say, okay, it's covered. They said, we need to talk to your dad. So I call them and I pretend to be his the dad. dad. Huh? You're the, the dad I'm now. the dad. I threw a little bass in my voice. Yeah, this is oh, my son's car was parked. Yeah, my idiot son, you know. He's got one of those aftermarket stereos and yeah. So, no, I understand the, the you know, you know, and so he explains the whole thing. So, by the way, we had to go through all of his paperwork to find the the uh like the um the homeowner's report. Like, so we had the that the number, we had everything. This is before computer like they have to go they've got it in files. Yeah, the file. So, anyway, I call and then they were like, "Yeah, just send in anything that was stolen." And he had put his let his his uh his radio has been stolen, so we went to our buddy who worked at a stereo shop, 
there used to be these things called stereo shops where they would put in stereos and they'd build like they'd build stereos in your car. And I stuff. remember, yeah. Sound advice is what it was yeah, called. Yeah, sound advice. That doesn't exist anymore? I don't think so. It was yeah. on Bush. Yeah. So we went to him and he wrote us up an estimate for like $7,000. And then he submits it. We submit it. They took a thousand out. They cut him a check. Depreciation. This is when I learned about depreciation. They cut him a check, though, for like $5,800 or something. He went and bought a he went and bought a, a Ninja 600, the motorcycle. Yeah. So because with that, so he still got his car. And now a bike. And a motorcycle. And no radio. But no. that's fine. No. no, no. Yeah, he put in a, a regular yeah. You know, so we went back to our Walmart. buddy. Give him you give him two hundred bucks, and he puts it. He said, "Yeah, yeah, we got one. We pulled out of another car." And yeah, um, yeah, boom, fraud, fraud at sixteen years old. And at that age, it's not fraud. You're just pulling a fast one. It's just a fast. You I know, and I never thought it was like break it. Like I didn't think I could get in trouble. I thought or we that would get that in trouble. That was gonna grow into. Stealing no, people's no, homes. No. And listen, honestly, after that, like, I never committed any But now that you're, that. Well, well, I bet you if we start trading stories, you'll yeah. be like, oh, and I remember there was this. that one oh, time. I, because now that I'm talking to you, I'm like, man, I remember the first vacation I ever took with my ex-wife. We were broke. And, uh, and I said, listen, let's go to Colorado. I have an idea. So <laughs> <laughs> and my ex-wife is like, please don't tell me. I'm like, don't worry about it. Let me, I'll, I'll do all the talking. So we go to the airline to, you know, counter. And the lady goes, are you going to check any luggage? And I said, yeah, you store backpacks, but we want to check it in. So she puts it on the, on the scale and she puts the tag, put it on the carousel and it goes on the plane. Well, we get to Colorado. I take the backpacks off the carousel, pull the stickers out and I put mine on, put my wife's on and I go, give me one second. So I go to the counter and I said, where's my bag? My bag's didn't arrive. And the lady goes, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, look, everybody picked up their bag. And I have two bags that I checked in and they didn't arrive. And the lady goes, well, file this claim with everything that was inside. And I'm like, well, of course, I wasn't going to say like they had a Picasso in it. But I'm like, listen, I had my video camera and I have my, ski my skiing outfit and I have blah, 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 and blah, blah. And the lady goes, do you want a voucher to buy all this stuff? Or would you like just for us to mail you a check? I'm like, a check will be just fine. <laughs> so we used a credit card, got home, had a check, paid for the vacation. And I'm like, man, never thought it was fraud. No, no, never no. thought you were getting I'm over. Like, I'm just getting over on them. I'm, I'm like, just... I figure out a way to travel for free. Yeah. yeah. You know, if it would have been a YouTube channel back then, I would have probably made a video of how to travel for free. <sighs> so is that normal behavior? <laughs> this is what I want. Connor this is what I want. Connor, is that, is that, have you ever thought about, because you're, you're, you're an innocent child of a product of America. Have you ever thought about, you know, maybe I can pull this and get away with it and, or, or that, or, or you are so intimidated by the law that you will never do that. Or, or, or is it just, or is it just, I just genuinely just don't think about fraud. I, I don't think about fraud because I don't want to commit a crime. I mean, I have friends that have values that would, yeah, yeah. like if I tell them that story, they're like, dude, why would you do that? I mean, the people at the airline, you know, they're laying people off because I'm like, I don't give a fuck. It depends on the situation. Like, well, I think if anybody's watching this that has a story to share, you should drop a comment right now. Look, Connor, I'm using the, the, the verbiage, dropping a comment, right? I got, yeah, I got it. it. You should drop, I'm, I'm learning here. You should drop a comment right now. Tell us your story. Maybe you can say like, I have a friend of mine who did this, wank, wank, you know, because we don't want you to get in trouble. Hey, whoa, where are you going? Where are you going? So just drop a comment here. And, uh, Matt had to go, so I'm going to wrap up this video. If you like this video, hit the subscribe bu button, ring the bell, put some money on Juan Sanchez's account. Make sure you follow him. Oh, that, never mind. I'm He's back. back. Never. Oh, hey, Colby's here. Ladies and gentlemen, we might be Colby able to fix some problems. is here. So, all right, what are we doing? The balance of nature has been restored. I, you know, I was just thinking, I was trying to think of another one. Of another one? I'm sure you have a billion. It's just for There's, us. The, it, it for just, me, it's just, it was so. It was an everyday thing. I mean, I drove with, I switched the tags of my cars many times and, and then I got pulled over once and I got busted. I mean, I mean, I drove with expired driver license. 
Uh, dude. Oh, you know what I used to do? I used to buy my, well, in college, I would buy the uh, the books. You know, the, On the, the used ones or the new ones? No, no, I would buy brand new ones. Mm -hmm. And then I just, I mean, literally I'd buy them and the next day come back and fucking sell them right back. Remember when they weren't that strict on return policies? Yeah. Bro, I used to use things for like a year and a half and then pack all my stuff and go back and, hey, listen, we just bought this. It oh, doesn't I, work. You Boom. know, the other thing I used to do, like my son would break something and I would write a letter to the manufacturer saying, look, my son dropped this down the stairs. We buy all your products. I've had this game, this game. He loves your stuff. Admittedly, and I'd always say, look, admittedly, he broke the, the game. He got frustrated. He threw it down. I mean, I'm not, you know, but I would love that for, it's only the screen that's broken knowing they can't fix just yeah. the screen. Could you please fix it? Send me an invoice and I'll pay you the invoice. You know, thank you so much. We're a loyal customer. We buy all, you know, he has, I mean, I'd list all these things he has and this and this. We always talk about your games. Well, and then I'd send it off. They'd send you back a new one and five or six new games with it. That's same thing. Beautiful. Same thing. Whenever I would go to, I, I've done this several times when I've gone to like a nice hotel I go to the nice hotel and then I write a letter saying, listen, I've, my friends and family stay at your hotels all the time. We've stayed here and I would go online and find other places in, in New York and here and here and here. You know, my, my aunt exclusively stays here every time, two or three times. You know, we've never had a problem. Unfortunately, we stayed at your hotel for five days on four of those days. And then I would explain some problem that happened almost every other day or you didn't have a second bed or a crib or whatever it was. And then I'd write this, you know, is there any way that you can think that we can resolve this, you know, you know, this issue? Sure enough, I'd get back five days, uh, th you know, a four days, three, yeah, yeah, comp, you know, this and that. And they'd send this so ap apologetic and you get free four days and this and this and this and they'd send it to you. You could do that all, all day long. And you never think, man, something is wrong here. So that's why I was telling your viewers, if you have a story like this, share it. However, if you think this is not normal behavior, I mean, you have a, you have a, you have a, a lab here. We can actually, what do you think, Colby? Is that normal behavior when you're always thinking how to pull a fast one? How to, how to find a loophole? I think that's well, I don't think there are loopholes. Yeah. I think you're just, because I, I, there is no way I can say like, listen, I scam the banks because there is a loophole that, you know, you can lie on your application and get yeah. money. Yeah. The, the U.S. attorney calls loopholes fraud yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the loopholes like, of, what are you uh, talking about that's just a loophole i found a little hole and i went through it yeah 39 million dollars later yeah this is the hole got bigger so i think that's uh i think that's a wrap all right i want to hear feedback i want to hear feedback people and go to the patreon 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 account yes support this show via patreon let me tell you this is why you need to support this show that shirt that Matt was wearing is wearing right now used to be white. This is a great. He has washed it so it. many times with all his colors because he doesn't have enough detergent that is now all that right. Color. Let's wrap this up. We're getting old. It's getting old. All right. <laughs> yeah, look, he, Connor. Connor. He, he agreed. Connor. All right. Hey, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you like the video, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified, and hit uh, leave a comment in the comment section and share the video with all your friends and family. See ya. Adios. Adios.